Hello internet, it is I, Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today we're going to be talking about Godzilla x Kong, The New Empire. So as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons, so let's get to it. Pros! So this is the latest Monsterverse flick, and this whole franchise started way back in 2014 with Godzilla 2014. And this movie right here, man, I remember when it was coming out, it had so much hype surrounding it because the trailers were epic. They were, like, it made the movie look spectacular. And as a result, it garnered a ton of hype. And it came out, it was, it was successful, although it had a very, a bit of a divisive reaction from people because it wasn't quite the movie they Hoped it would be, (laughs) judging by the trailers. As a result, the movie had a very front-loaded run, open of 93 million, and it just barely made past 200 million domestically. But it made over 500 million worldwide, so it definitely made more than enough to justify making more movies. And they did just that. But before making another Godzilla movie, they made a King Kong movie, but not like the King Kong from like the Peter Jackson you know, from Peter Jackson, like from 2005, this was a different King Kong. And this came out in 2017. And I wasn't sure about its chances for a while, but the movie ended up being a, a nice hit. Over 61 million, made 168 million domestically, made over 500 million, just like Godzilla 2014. So obviously, you got to keep going. And let me tell you, like March 2017, that may be one of the most successful months ever in the history of movies in terms of box office. I mean, you had like this, you had Logan, you had the 2017 Beauty and the Beast uh, remake. Like all those movies were tearing it up in theaters. <laughs> like it was a good time to be in the movie theater industry. So now we move on to 2019 with Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And things took a turn, but and definitely not a turn for the better, no. Um, this movie actually kind of flopped. <laughs> it only opened with like 47 million, only made like 110 million domestic, less than 400 million worldwide on a budget of like 170 million. That is... Is not good at all. It joined a bunch of big budget movies that flopped. Um, uh, forget like that year, like that summer. I mean, it joined the ranks of like dark. Well, it didn't do as bad as some of these movies, but still, stuff like Dark Phoenix and Men in Black International just bad company. <laughs> Let's just say that just really bad company. And it kind of made the future of this series very doubtful but Godzilla versus Kong that was already in production so there was nothing was going to stop that movie from releasing not even the pandemic because as you know uh, after 2019 once we got into 2020 uh, things really changed (laughs) things really took a bad turn in the whole world thanks to COVID and I, you all know what happened with movie theaters. They shut down for several months. They came back. No one was going to them. It was a very dark time period. And Godzilla vs. Kong came out March of 2021. And not only was it coming out at a really shit time for movies, but it was also a part of the now infamous HBO Max experiment. Well, the former HBO Max experiment, because it's not called that anymore. But the whole point of this experiment was for all these movies, all these Warner Brothers movies to be released in both theaters and HBO Max at the same time to theoretically, you know, you know, have theaters, give theaters movies and prop up the streaming service. And for the most part, that experiment was an absolute disaster. (laughs) But this right here was one of the few movies to not be a disaster. In fact, it's it's the most successful movie of the bunch. And it was the first movie after movie theaters reopened that really 
brought a decent amount of people back to the cinema because by before then like the high you would get would be like in the 50s <laughs> like 50 million that's how bad it was but Godzilla versus Kong despite everything going against it it defied expectations i mean it made like 48 million in like 5 days 32 million over the 3 days which was like incredible <laughs> back then like it, like it was league like leagues above like other movies that came out around that time end up making over 100 million domestic 468 million worldwide so definitely can't call that a flop <laughs> especially considering everything that was going against it and now here we are in 2024 with a marketplace way healthier than it was in 2021 even though we have a, a there's a new hurdle to deal with that was the impact of last year's strikes the actor strike and the writer strike but so that's, that's nothing compared to the impact of a pandemic <laughs> nothing compared to that so yeah so the monsterverse has been relatively successful there's only been one real financial dud they've had and that was uh king of the monsters but every other movie's been a hit so i'd say the franchise is in a pretty healthy position so i'm gonna label that as a pro you know the franchise is healthy enough not to mention you know brand name recognition you know everyone knows who godzilla is everyone knows who king kong is like they've they've been around for generations and you know seeing these two like behemoths clash on the big screen it was a dream a dream that was obviously you know <laughs> given to us in 2021 now you're getting more of that so you know also obviously brand name recognition so that's pro number two pro number three uh let's see reviews 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 are, well, the critic score is like 55%, which isn't, you know, good, but it's not like terrible or anything. I mean, it's better than uh, Ghostbusters uh, Frozen Empire, but the review, the critic reviews don't really matter in this case because no one's going to look at those <laughs> for a movie like this. Audience score is much higher at 92%, which is ideal, like that's the type of audience score you want but that's what you really need and let me check its cinema score i imagine it's like an a it has to be a minus well that's close enough to an a a minus so obviously word of mouth from audiences is much better than it is from critics and that's important so yeah so solid Audience score, solid cinema score, uh, critic score that's not fatal, but it's not going to help the movie either. I label that as a pro. Another pro is that competition. There's just not much out there. Everything else is just old at this point. Like Doom Part 2 is like a month old. Kung Fu Panda 4 is a month old. Well, about to be a month old. Uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I thought that movie's going to crash and burn this weekend. And April is just so dry when it comes to potential blockbusters. It's sad. I mean, some movies might still do well, but they're going to be like mid-level hits at best. I don't see any of them reaching blockbuster status. So that's going to be depressing. So that gives Godzilla X-Kong an advantage. It gives it, you know, an opportunity to make more money thanks to not dealing with any serious competition. So, yeah, lack of real competition. I'll label that as a pro. Uh, another pro, I guess, Warner Brothers. Been, they've been marketing this quite a bit, making sure everyone knows that it, that it exists, that it's coming out. And, you know, say they've done a solid enough job. I mean... Sure, I mean, say what you want about how they handle their movies, and believe me, there is a lot to say about that. But 
when it comes to some of their bigger movies, like it's not they they've given their best effort. <laughs> like like look how they managed Dune Part Two, and now that's the biggest movie of twenty twenty four so far. And so yeah, Warner Brothers they've been marketing this movie quite a bit. Godzilla X Kong, making sure all the fans know about it. So yeah, got labeled that as a pro. Another pro is Thursday previews, which are a lot bigger than I would have anticipated for a movie like this. It opened with 10 million in previews, which I'm like, damn, okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting double digit previews, but all right. And I mean, for comparison's sake, I guess let's look at other Godzilla movies, all these MonsterVerse Godzilla movies. I mean, King of the Monsters back in 2019, that had a Thursday preview of 6.3 million. So that's 10 million. It's quite a bit higher than that. And actually look at it like recently. Uh, shoot. I guess I'll go with Warner Brothers. Recently, you know, Dune Part 2, which came out like the beginning of March. It's real funny how the March ended with what started with a Warner Brothers movie. Now it's ending with a Warner Brothers movie. That had a Thursday preview of 12 million. And that's like the biggest we've gotten like in uh, uh, this year. And da, 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 biggest previews. Okay. This is Godzilla X Kong is just outside the list. But I mean, look at movies that are like near it. I mean, you got like the Five, Night, Five Nights of Freddy's, Little Mermaid, It Chapter 2, Fate of the Furious. Fate of the Furious is actually a pretty decent comparison because both movies came out like Easter weekend. Oppenheimer, Minions Rise of Gru, Wonder Woman, like, like, it, like near that. You know, 80, 90 million range, which looks really good. I don't think it's going to go that high, <laughs> but, you know, still in good company. So, yeah. Yeah, it's preview numbers are very, very good. So I got to label it as a pro. And another pro is that this weekend is Easter weekend and Easter. It can be a real boon for the box office, particularly Good Friday. Good Friday, obviously, people are off work and people are off of school. And so that leads to the box office being like artificially, that artificially inflates box office, makes it way higher than it normally would be. Because, you know, holidays do that, you know, like all the time. I mean, that's what happens like every Valentine's Day, pretty much. And ugh, I gotta find like all the Easter movies. Good thing Godzilla vs. Kong was an Easter movie. I should be able to find it there, hopefully. Yes, okay. Opening. There we go. It's like the past few years have been like the past like decade or so, we've had some big movies opening on Easter. I mean, you got Batman v Superman. You got Furious 7, and last year, you had the Mario movie demolishing any and all expectations. <laughs> Opening for like 146 million, 3D, and like 200 million for the five-day weekend. That was pure madness <laughs> yeah, last year. Then you got Fate of Furious almost making it to 100 million, not quite, but still making like 98 million. After that, it really just, it takes a fall. But, you know, these numbers like show... The potential of easter like you can launch a big movie around easter and make a lot of money it's it's, it's possible it's very much possible now will godzilla x kong you know reach the heights of the top three movies no no fucking shot but still the fact is easter can be a very good weekend for movies and i feel like Obviously, Godzilla X Kong is going to benefit from the holiday, at least for opening day. It'll benefit there. So, yeah, I got to label the holiday as a pro. 
And I think that's it with pros. Okay, cons. I don't think these really apply anymore, but with this movie, one thing that really worried me is that before this, we had Godzilla Minus One, which came out in December. And we all know, you all probably remember how hyped that movie was, how people raved about it, said it was the greatest thing, like it was amazing, it was incredible. Hell, that hype, that like acclaim convinced me to go see the movie for myself. And I did, I watched it, subtitles and all, and I loved it. <laughs> like the hype was real with that one. But it made me think, you know, this is so good, but it kind of makes the American movies look hella inferior. <laughs> so, you know, especially with how they handle human characters, like, don't even get me started. <laughs> like, minus one, like, that might be like the first Godzilla movie I've seen where I actually give a shit about the humans and their struggles. Any other Godzilla movie, I don't care. <laughs> They're just there. And, yeah, I feel like Godzilla X Kong would, you know, deal with that comparison where it looks like so much worse than Minus One. So, I, I thought that, that was a worry I had for this movie, but probably that worry seems to be for not. <laughs> so, I guess I'll just label that as like a... A con that no longer really applies. And I guess I'm trying to think of some other cons, serious cons. Obviously, this movie's gonna be front loaded, not just because of the holiday, but because this is very fan driven. <laughs> because obviously, any like MonsterVerse fans, any Godzilla fans, King Kong fans, they're all gonna show up day one, and they're just gonna even with. April, as weak as it is, this movie is very... I have a strong feeling this movie is going to just fade real quick. <laughs> because of, you know, the hype being, like, reaching, like, overdrive day one. And then never reaches that hype ever again. So, yeah. Obviously, the front... The, you know, pretty much guaranteed front-loading. I'm going to label that as a con. And I think that's really it. Yeah, yeah. So opening weekend. Originally, I was thinking it'll open like in the 50s or something. But with this preview number, yeah, it's going to do better than that. The early numbers I've seen is that this movie may hit under 70 million. It might hit 70, maybe. If it really like pops <laughs> late. I guess the, the box ups I saw, that was like... Up to like at 5, 6 p.m. So I imagine it probably popped off late in the evening. So there's a chance it might do better than that. So I'm going to say seven, you know, 65 to 70 million. I'm going to go with that just to be safe. And its final total. Again, I see this being hella front loaded. Um, 150 million. Maybe like, you know, 140 to 160 million. Let's go with that. That's what I'm going with. That's what I'm comfortable with. And that's it for Godzilla X Kong. I know I just found out that apparently the X is supposed to be silent. So it's just Godzilla Kong. But I like calling it X Kong. Godzilla X Kong. I don't know why. The X, just having the X there, it just sounds better to me. And also kind of, it's kind of funny because, you know, when I see an X between two characters' names, I usually, like, indicates uh, a ship <laughs> i know that's not happening here but it just looks like it and i think i find that kind of funny but anywho we got one more movie to discuss this weekend only two yay thank god <laughs> i was really getting sick of doing like four movie weekends and that's in the land of saints and sinners and then that we're done for march march will be in the rear view mirror so stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, so that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn on notifications, share the whole drill. We'll check out more videos like this. I got playlists on the homepage, all previous prediction videos on man the channel, all types of all the. If you want to watch any of the movies I've done this year, the past few years, you can go right ahead. 
There's also the cancelled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. I've covered Godzilla X Kong a few times. Let me see. Yeah, one, two, three. Okay. First time I talked about it was what do you know? Alongside Dune Part Two. <laughs> Uh, this was episode 135. This is when both movies got their original release dates. Although Godzilla X Kong was always meant to be a 2024 movie, Doom Part 2 was supposed to be meant to be 2025, not 2025, 2023 movie. Boy, that didn't stick. <laughs> so that was the first time I talked about it. The second time was episode 202 this is when the strikes were hitting hard <laughs> so i talked about it alongside doing part two again and uh lord of the rings the war of the rorium war harem whatever that is when all those movies that got delayed uh so yeah that was rough and then the third time I talked about this movie was episode 226. I talked about it alongside Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I find it so weird that Ghostbusters and Godzilla, X-Kong, they both use Empire in their titles. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe it's just some weird coincidence, but I think that's a little weird. <laughs> so I talked about alongside God Ghostbusters, Mickey 17, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, and two Jordan Peele movies that were on the calendar, but now are no longer there. So, yeah, that was the, the third time I talked about it, episode 226. So, if you want to watch any of the past, any of those canceled episodes, or any other ones I made on the channel, all 239 episodes I've made, if you want to watch any of them, go right ahead. But if you want to binge them all, go right ahead. I highly encourage you do that, so go do it. I have another one I'm planning on filming once I'm done with these prediction videos. That'll be 2.40, so stay tuned for that as well. There's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. My March recap will come out in about a week and a half's time. Yeah, a week and a half from now, roughly. And uh, that video is going to be actually, you know, it's actually going to be f somewhat fun to make because it won't be depressing as hell like the first two months of the year. There's actually going to be some positive things to say, which is going to be real nice. So, yeah, nice, nice change of pace. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past um, prediction recap videos, I'm on the channel. You can go right ahead. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.